Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a final year medical student at Cambridge University. And in this video, we're looking at the Oxbridge Medicine interview. And we're gonna be hearing from nine different medical students who are offering their tips. All of these students have had interviews at various colleges in Cambridge, um, but I've shown the video to my friends at Oxford and run the tips by them. And they've unanimously said that everything that applies to the Cambridge interview also applies to the Oxford interview because the two are pretty much identical in terms of you know what they ask you, the things you need to be able to do to do well in them. If you have a look in the description below, you'll see a link to a video containing these same medical students' experiences of the Cambridge interview. And you'll also find timestamps to all 15 tips so that if you want to skip ahead or if you've seen something before, or if you want to share a specific bit of the video, you can just reference the appropriate timestamp. So without further ado, let's hear from nine medical students talking about 15 tips for the Oxbridge Medicine interview. I really hope you find it useful and I'll see you at the end. The biggest thing I always tell everyone is that you need to be able to think out loud. It's a good song. Uh, <laughs> thinking out loud is really important. Like, what you don't want to do when they ask you a question that you don't know the answer to is to sit there like a lemon for 30 seconds or for a minute, for two minutes, just kind of sitting there and thinking. Because the objective of the, of the Cambridge and I assume Oxford interview isn't that, you know, you know the answer to everything. It's that they can see your thinking process and they can see how you'd get the answer, how you'd reason things. So thinking out loud is super important for that. Definitely speak out loud, um, show them your thought process. So don't just tell them your answer, tell them why you're getting that answer um, and how you might sort of progress through it. If they can see your thought process, that's the main thing and that's what they want to know. I was kind of practicing this before my interview that I would ask a friend to ask me a question that I didn't know the answer to and I would say things like, hmm, okay, so what if we were to start with this concept? Or for example, one, one Cambridge question that, was, that I found online, I don't know if they actually use it, was how would you calculate the number of molecules of oxygen in this room? So instead of just kind of sitting there thinking in my head how I would calculate that, I would kind of make it a two-way dialogue. I'd be like, okay, molecules of oxygen. Uh, so firstly, we need to find the volume of the room. So, I mean, we could eyeball that. That's probably about six meters across, about eight meters across, maybe about three meters high. So we can work out a volume from that. And then I think, I mean, if we, if we assume that we've got standard conditions, we could potentially apply the gas, uh, have a gather as gas constant. I can't remember what it's called and like multiply that by the number of, multiply that by the volume to get the answer. So, you know, while, while I've been rambling a bit in this, you can, you can see that I've been thinking out loud. I haven't just been kind of retreating into my head and trying to work out what the answer is. So that is the number one biggest tip for the Cambridge interviews. Secondly, I would say, don't be afraid if you don't know the answer. As, as I said earlier, the objective is not to know the answer. The objective is just to think about it. And the questions they will ask you are gonna be quite hard. So, you know, if you're the type of person that gets flustered by not knowing the right answer, then that's something that you wanna practice, something you wanna work on before your interview. Um, always be, be willing to venture an answer. If you don't know, say, well, I'm not sure. Um, I don't, I don't know, but if I were to hazard a guess, it would be this, so that you make sure that you're at least using your brain, you know, and thinking about the question, and that's what they really want to see, that you grapple with the problem intellectually. And I think, again, remembering that they are there to test you, but also they want to get the best out of you. Yeah. So they, in mine, even when I, I couldn't, I couldn't get to an answer for some of the more science questions, um, they would help me, they'd give me clues and they'd yeah. really try to guide me, um, so in that way it was good. My main thing would be revise your sciences and your maths, um, be ready with those when you arrive. I, I, I used to get asked quite a lot, do I need to know this level of chemistry and biology mm. and do I need to know this stuff in chemistry and I'd say know your A-level syllabus well you know, n know your chemistry and biology well, uh, and really know the principles. But then further than that, I, unless you've mentioned it in your personal statement, you don't need to know super, uh, you know, com complicated concepts. Because they kind of, I'd say they want you to work from the from principles basics, you yeah. know at A-level. Yep. Yeah, um, if you can show evidence of wider reading, it's, it's great. It, but what's important is not to answer the question you wish had been asked because you know loads about that. Answer the question they've actually asked you. So if they ask you about high blood pressure and coronary disease, don't 
spout off about diabetes and coronary disease because you've read loads about that and you've read this and you did this work experience and it just answered the question. It seems that if you do actually happen to know loads about the topic that they touch on, they'll just move on because again, like I said, they're interested in seeing how much new knowledge you can take on and how you can apply your knowledge within that interview. It's not sort of exactly how much you know to start with. I actually found my Cambridge interviews really fun, which might make you think I'm a bit of a weirdo. But actually that's really important to know because you should find it fun. You should be passionate about medicine, about the science -y concepts that are going on, because if you're applying to Oxbridge, you're about to do a really science heavy course. Um, so if you're not passionate about it, you're applying to the wrong place. Um, they know that, it's part of why they do the interview like that. They want your passion to show through. So if you've got problems with uh, being really anxious for interviews or um, you just feel like you don't know enough science or, for example you need to be able to talk confidently and enthusiastically about science on the day if because if that enthusiasm shines through the interviewer who is normally a lecturer for that subject or a tutor um, supervisor for that subject will think oh wow yeah this this person can think that and they're really keen like uh, they'll be they'd be really fun to teach actually. Um, and I think that what you should be willing to do in, in the Cambridge interview is you should be willing to pivot and you should be willing to backtrack. So if you think that you're barking under the wrong tree, don't be proud, don't have intellectual hubris or whatever, just backtrack and then say, ah, you know, that's a good point. And then push the logic and the reasoning from there. Take, you had a good one about that. Oh yeah, so I, I was told when I was in sixth form to always take a pen and a piece of paper, put it in a pocket somewhere. Because, as we mentioned before, a lot of the a lot of the interview is about trying to show how you get to an answer, what's going through your head, and sometimes certain questions really help if you could have a piece of paper, paper just just for you because you, you get to write things down, you get to sort of think out loud while drawing things, and for them it's really useful as well because they see so much. Some people find it hard to. Um, say out loud what they're thinking and sometimes it just, just helps so much when you ha can draw something show them like actually you think maybe the graph would look something like this mm -hmm. it just shows a lot more of you mm -hmm. than you normally would be able to say just by speaking mm -hmm. but yeah just then don't be afraid to take your time with the questions uh, write stuff down if it helps bring a pen but apart from that any interview practice you can get for it will will be helpful, particularly if the people have had an Oxbridge interview themselves, because they're really not as sinister and strange and out to get you as, as the media would have you believe. It's really important, even if you think you've got the answer, to just be slow with it. Yeah. Because being slow uses up time, <laughs> which is good. and. Also, it really shows, you know, your thinking. Yeah, I think that's quite a good point. If you know the answer, you don't want to just say, oh, it's this. You kind of want to like, because if you know the answer, you already have a little bit of an advantage. Yeah, so yeah. take a step back and decide, you know what, I'm going to sound really clever yeah. and I'm going to work I'm gonna my way. Off I'm going to show off <laughs> and like really break it down as though you're teaching them mm -hmm. how, like, why that's the answer. Um, and that that's really good because it's all about your thought process, showing how you go through the motions and how you get there. So you apply to medical school against lots of smart people, right? Lots of people who have got straight A's, who've got good grades in their exams. Everybody who applies to Cambridge is like the top cut of them, right? So if the Cambridge interview was just about getting the answers, it would be an extraordinarily wasteful way of finding that out. After all, they could just do what they do every other time and sit you in a hall and make you do a test and the people who do best in the test get in. But that's a bad way of getting it because you're not here to learn what you already know, you're here to learn. And a lot of what you learn while you're here is stuff that's like way new to you. New concepts, new ideas, new ways of thinking, he says in a frighteningly cliched manner. So they need to test what it's like when you're learning things you don't know, when you're out your comfort zone of what you learn. They want to see how you learn, and they only see that by finding out what you don't know. 
So if, for example, they ask you a question about, I don't know, lungs, and you happen to have done a special project on lungs, and all you've done in biology up until this point was lungs, and you're an expert on lungs, they'll go, okay, fine, let's talk about the kidney instead and get you right in the back foot. And that doesn't mean that you're bad, it just means they recognise you know a lot about lungs and they're not going to get anything by hearing you talk about lungs for ages. They want to hear you struggle through kidneys rather than breeze through lungs. Because if you can demonstrate what you, the, you know, the way that you approach problems that you don't know the answer to, that's much more useful to them than finding out that you know a lot. Because everybody knows a lot. Everybody who's applying to Cambridge anyway knows a lot. Apart from enthusiasm showing in through in your interview, they want to see you can think. So that doesn't require you to be super duper intelligent, it doesn't require you to know every last fact about some specific disease, it just requires you to be able to think on your feet. So when you're in there on the day, make sure that you're comfortable enough to just be able to think out loud. They might ask you a question on something you know nothing about, but just think of any relevant information you do have and try and use that to answer the question. Um, they'll quite deliberately be ans asking you questions that you don't know the answer to because they don't want you to be in your comfort zone where you're going to give a textbook answer. They want you to be working through, they want to see how your brain works, they want to see how creatively you can think, how sensibly you think, how you can link different ideas up. Um, I think keeping calm is a huge thing because if you freak out in the middle of that interview then you might miss out on a few stages of the question um, and it's really important to keep focused because for the whole interview you might be working on one question. It's, it's, in my experience it really wasn't the why medicine, why this college, why this university questions, it really was the sciences so I think focus on those but also be prepared because some colleges do do one that's a bit more um, about your personal statement about your extracurricular things so have that ready but but focus on the science arguably there's even less preparation required for a cambridge interview than a normal interview because it's unpredictable and you know they're not going to ask you any of the questions that you think they're going to ask you so just practice talking and being relaxed and whatever relaxes you. I genuinely, when I came down, I forgot my uh, razor. I needed a shave, so I just walked into town, got a shave at a barber, and then went to the interview. And that was that was my exam. That was my interview day preparation. Worked well. All right, so that was 15 tips for the Oxbridge Medicine interview. I really hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and a massive shout out to my friends who took part in the video and helped make it possible. If you have any questions about the Oxbridge admissions process or about the interviews or about anything else uh, for that matter, just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Equally, if you have any suggestions for content that would be useful to you, uh, more things about the medicine application, interviews, BMAT, exam revision, just anything like that, just let me know in the comments down below and that would really help in kind of giving me ideas for videos that we could be doing on the channel. So yeah, let's end the video. Video there thank you very much for watching if you liked the video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to the channel please consider doing so uh, loads more videos coming out over the next few weeks about like interviews specifically and also more stuff about the application process and I also do vlogs every now and then about life as a medical student which you might find vaguely interesting cool thanks for watching have a great day and I will see you in the next one bye